On to lead service line inventory update. Mr. Seth Jensen, Director of Municipal Utilities. All right. So good evening, Mayor, members of Council, um, members of the public as well. This, this presentation is intended to um, kind of notify uh, folks of upcoming information that will be coming out of our department as it relates to uh, lead service line inventory and um, you know necessary communication um, that, that's required as part of putting together this inventory so uh, my name is Seth Jensen I'm the director of municipal utilities uh, I'm joined tonight by mr. John West our chief water operator has been an integral part of uh, developing the city's inventory in accordance with EPA and DOH requirements so there's a lot of sources of lead out there um, that can impact our health um, many of us know about lead paint in homes and spend a lot of time uh, focused <laughs> in on those older homes and uh, securing them for for children because there's significant health impacts associated with lead poisoning um, specifically in, in, in the younger populations but there is also uh, threat and potential uh, for lead exposure in our drinking water systems across the country uh, you can uh, come into contact with lead through pipes that the water passes through um, from the treatment plant to your home um, older homes have um, lead fittings and uh, fixtures that need to be um, understood and potentially replaced if possible uh, lead solder was used for a number of years in, on copper pipes so even though you think your home might be uh, safe and free of lead because you have beautiful copper plumbing all throughout uh, there's a chance those soldered joints uh, contain lead um, and our program specifically has been looking at um, whether or not Auburn's service lines have have lead in them uh, in general uh, for uh, water purveyors and the water system uh, the highest probability of lead exposure in your drinking water is in lead service lines and many communities across this country are facing uh, this as a crisis because for years and years and years the standard for installation of service lines from mains to homes uh, was lead pipe the city of Auburn doesn't appear to have ever had that material type as a standard so uh, in a way we are extremely lucky with respect to this issue uh, but nonetheless have to follow protocol and go through these procedures uh, that will result in some you know uh, potentially unnecessary uh, communications with with our um, customers uh, and we're going to work as swiftly in, as we can uh, to identify and I'll talk more about that uh, on subsequent slides so just for everybody's background I stole this picture off of the website so there may be some copyright infringements here but a lot of communities have been spending a, an awful lot of effort time and money on lead service line programs and as such there's a, a lot of information out there um, we haven't had to because generally uh, we're in fairly good good shape but the service line is broken down into you know, basically six components uh, you have your water main in the center of the street and for the city of Auburn that's ductile iron or cast iron um, many of our services are galvanized and they're served from the main to that galvanized pipe by a short lead gooseneck um, although this does contain lead or it's made of lead it's such a short section of pipe that the EPA and Department of Health don't classify that specific type of service like Auburn has as a lead service line we still will be removing them as we come across them and, and t taking care of them under normal programming However, it's not a requirement because the exposure risk is 
so small. Then there's the city side service or within the right of way, typically a galvanized line for the city. We have a shut off, which is right next to your sidewalk. You've seen those little round discs. Uh, you can remove the cap and that's where we can turn water and off, on and off to residential or commercial properties. And then there's a private side service. Uh, again, typically a galvanized pipe. Um, we're always using copper now within the right of way. Um, and you'll find copper pipes as well that um, make these connections. And sometimes even plastic on the private side. Um, folks are able to, to take advantage of the lower cost material and install plastic. Finally, uh, the city's um, purview for this lead service line inventory ends at our water meter inside the home and then all of your internal plumbing <coughs> goes from there. <clears throat> so again, this was, this was taken from the US EPA's guidance and website um, and, and it's very close to the the process by which we follow I'll just click through these five steps here uh, so we, we kind of get we got started with this early um, in trying to understand uh, what the requirements were with respect to uh, building out our inventory and what classified a lead service line versus a non lead service line and um, in 2017, we, we, we were just fact-finding or trying to, trying to figure this out. It went through some iterations. They were close to legislation. There was a change in president. Uh, that legislation didn't go through at that time because the new administration wanted to review uh, the EPA's uh, guidance on this. And, um, you know, the goal is to basically try to understand across the nation uh, what our what our lead exposure risk is. Um, in 2022, a template was provided to the city of Auburn and all municipalities within the state of New York uh, by the New York State Department of Health. And it, although we had started to at least review and try to figure out our records and what we had to be able to build out our inventory, we didn't want to get too far ahead of ourselves without the proper guidance. So it wasn't really until 2022 that we started diving into, let's start filling out this inventory uh, to meet the requirements of the health department. So going through this process, um, the last two to three years, John West has really been the lead on this from the city standpoint and we've been able to capitalize off of um, some very good interns over the past few years to, to assist us with this, but we've really just been taking all of the available data that we have, um, like tap cards or our service cards. Um, in 2012, 2014, 2014, there was a huge meter replacement project that took place here in Auburn. And when they did that work, they took photos inside of the, the buildings. So we were able to use photos inside of houses uh, to identify the material type. And that serves as a, as a way to properly fill out this inventory. So uh, just a couple of days ago, October 16th, uh, that was our deadline. We held to that deadline, even though our inventory was, was generally uh, together. Um, because once you submit your inventory, future action steps start, all right? And we didn't want to uh, have to get too far ahead of ourselves and make sure that our inventory was as up-to-date as possible. So the summary sheet uh, is probably what uh, the folks from the health department are going to look at first for every community. Uh, we have just under 8,500 uh, services in this inventory. It's a large Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the total number of identified uh, service lines is 4,074. And that means that we know the material from the water main all the way to the house. Our records are very good in our right-of-way. Our records aren't as good 
on the, on the private side. So just about half of our services we had complete records for. The others, the unknown services, that 4416, um, those we have quite a bit of information on in most cases. Sometimes we just didn't have cards, we didn't have any information. Um, but those unknown services uh, will need to be known over the next few years. So we're going to be working with our community um, to fill in those blanks and, and ourselves to fill in those blanks. The other, the other one there, the total number of GSLRR, those are galvanized services, service lines requiring replacement. So we have 161 of those. What that means is we know on the residential side that it's galvanized, but then on the public side, we don't have any information. And if we don't have any information on our side, we have to assume that it was lead or at one point in time it might have been lead even though it's galvanized now. Lead can leach into galvanized pipes and if there's a long section of lead in front of a galvanized pipe as it flows into the house, that galvanized pi pipe requires replacement under this program. So those letters have to be different than the unknown letters. So we have two, two types of communication that we'll be pumping out as a result of this. That information has to be provided to our residents within 30 days of the inventory, so that means by November 15th, we'll have to mail out about 4,500 letters. 4,400 letters will be, you have an unknown service, and I can show you an example a little bit later of what that looks like. And then the 161 letters will say, you, have a galvan you potentially have a galvanized service line requiring replacement. They don't have to replace their service line right away. What they're going to have to do, or what we're going to have to do, is prioritize those and find out more information on those lines to take, be able to potentially take them off the list. Because if we pothole down on, say, where the curb stop is or where that, where that shutoff is, we can see the line going into the house. We can see the line going to the main. And if it's galvanized and it's galvanized, it's, it's not necessarily has to be replaced. Should it be replaced? It probably should because it's old and it's been there for a long time and there's chances are that the flow is restricted because the inside of the pipe is corroded at this point. But customers will not have to replace if we can get in there and identify them. The other stipulation or one of the requirements is that we have to make this inventory available and we have that up on our city website right now, um, and we'll be providing more information uh, over the next two weeks to that site uh, for our residents to be able to review. In the future, one of the things that I'd like to do, because this inventory is so massive in size, when you print it out as a PDF, it gets really small. You can, you can search within a PDF, so you could type in your address, search, and find it. But not everybody knows how to do that, and it's not the easiest thing to do. So um, over the next year, we're going to build this whole program out as a GIS map and make it available to the public so that they're, they can just go in and search by address, and it'll populate their service line. Other little things that we have to do, like if um, there's a property transfer, a lawyer will call our water billing department and say, hey, you know, Joe's selling his house to Sam, Sam's the new owner, we'll have to provide that information on what their type of service line is, if it's an unknown service and if it's um, a galvanized service requiring replacement. So anytime there's a change in ownership, we have to provide uh, notice. And then anytime, um, one, once a year when we redo these inventories, because this is going to be an annual process that has to be done each year. So here's the plan, I think. This is, this is kind of what I'm thinking. So we're going to continue to replace galvanized water services out in the right of way with our capital improvement programs and, and, and projects. Um, 
We're going to continue to work with residents and customers as they want to replace their services or as they're doing improvements to their home. Um, this, is, this is a difficult um, project for some communities because um, for like, for, for instance, for Auburn, our code says that the water service and the sewer service is the customer's responsibility from the main to their house. And that can be, get pretty costly. So if you had a lead service line, say you're in the city of Syracuse with that same type of code, um, you know, that could be a five or six thousand dollar expense, maybe more to replace their service line if it, if it was lead. Here we're so fortunate that we don't have those lead service lines. We have a few that we haven't identified completely, that 161, but my guess is we're not going to find much lead uh, in, in, our, in our water services. That guess is based on experience from our crews. Um, I'm not sure if you guys uh, know Mike Delph. He's our crew chief. He's been in the water department for 35 plus years now, specifically doing this type of work every year for 35 years. He's come across two lead service lines in his entire career. So it's really not the standard in Auburn, and we're so lucky. You know, not to use lead, but we definitely dodged a bullet with that because some communities like Chicago have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of lead service lines and billions of dollars that will have to get pumped into these communities to get the lead out. Um, one thing that we've talked about at plumbing board and also I've seen over the course of the last few years is we set a cap for our revolving loan water and sewer program uh, to try to control uh, costs for property owners so that people wouldn't get taken advantage of with the pricing to replace their service line. But over the last 10 years, a lot has changed with the market. You know, it was $2,500 was the, the fee that was set in our program. It's currently set in our program for a water service replacement. We're, I'm seeing more and more now that people that take advantage of that program are also spending cash out of pocket to be able to, you know, completely pay off that bill with their plumber. So we're going to, we're going to recommend to council that we revisit, um, our, our program and, uh, ask that that be increased from 2,500 for water to 3,500 for a water service and 9,000 to 12,000 for a sewer service. With that though, a stipulation requiring that plumbers supply their detailed itemized costs to us to review to ensure that that's not happening. Help, hopefully help to protect the customer. Um, did I miss anything here? The fifth bubble is identify funding, and Onia's in the crowd here to, tonight, Onia Kloster. She, she was um, instrumental in um, writing a grant for our department about this time last year to the state of New York, uh, in which we received an award of almost a million dollars. Um, it's taken since we, we heard about the award maybe in the fall of last year until the fall of this year to have a contract but that contract was just executed in September of this year. And this is, this is huge for us because our, we don't have many lead service lines, but our inventory is incomplete, so we have to send out all these notifications every year, which is expensive. And it raises alarm to customers that's not necessary. But if we don't know and have a record that says there's a copper pipe in the ground or a galvanized pipe in the ground. The program makes us assume that it's lead until we figure it out. So we're going to utilize this money, and I don't think many communities are doing it this way, but we're going to try to funnel as much funding to our own staff to do this work, to build out this inventory. We're going to rely on customers, if possible, so the notifications we send out are going to empower the customer to go into the basement, take a picture of their service, send us a picture of their service with the address, and then we can fill out our inventory. But if we can't get in the house to figure out what material type's coming into the house or we don't know what's in the right-of-way, we have to physically dig 
and look at the pipe to know what it is, and then we can say what it is. Go ahead. Is that in the letter? Like if we don't get, take a picture, then we would have to investigate it. I mean, obviously it's more desirable to provide access to the city. Correct, but in some cases, like I said, we might have the record on the, on the private side we might know that it's galvanized. For some services, we don't have any information. All that tells us from the basement, if we can see the material coming in the basement, it tells us that the, the private side or the, you know, the, the, the non-right-of-way side, what that material type is. It doesn't tell us what the right-of-way side is. So even if we get that information from them on those types of services that we have no records on, we'll still have to dig. So there's like, there's like three different situations. There's gonna be situations where we know what's in the right of way, we don't know what is, is private. They, there'll be a huge help there. Or we'll go door to door and knock on doors and ask, you know, present ourselves and see if we can access their basement to take a picture and verify ourselves or help them through that process if they can't go take a picture and email it to us. So that's one scenario. We can complete the inventory just by getting access to the house. The more difficult one is if we don't know the material type in the right of way. That we can only figure out by digging. So in this grant, $550,000 is going towards a lease of a new Vactor truck. And that Vactor truck will be used just for hydro excavation. So we'll literally be able to drill a hole into the ground good ground that's maybe 18 inches in diameter right down over that shutoff and see the pipe on both sides and then fill the hole back in so it's fairly non-invasive it's not like we're digging a big hole in somebody's front yard and it's very efficient and a lot of communities are doing things like that I know I believe aqua bought three vectors or two vectors just for this program out of their own money so this is, this is a huge, huge savings. I mean, $550,000 is a lot of money for Auburn to come up with for another piece of equipment. Um, but this will, this will be very helpful. And then $300,000 will be our, our workforce out there doing the work, um, you know, whether it's during the day, during the night, or on the weekend. Um, all of that time that we allocate to this specific project for inventory can be billed back to this grant. So we'll have some nice offsets from that. Um, there's some technical or some uh, administrative support as well from either uh, Carol Storrs, Crystal Nevadomsky in, in the office that I work in or from, from Onia or Christina uh, assisting with the grant administration. And then we've allocated $50,000 to develop this map and to start to try to manage this whole program in GIS. So that's, that's the presentation. I don't know if you guys have any questions or if you're interested in seeing like a quick snapshot of what those letters might look like. You wanna take a quick look? Sure. Yeah. Did I miss anything, John? Um, I wrote that I'll just let everybody know. So every three years we're required to do lead copper testing. The last set was done last summer. So we're required again in 2026 to do well. Um, in the past, we've had to do 30 spots that were either had the lead with, you saw there, the gallon, the goose net, or were the houses that had copper pipe with lead solder to them. So those were the areas that were uh, constructed and targeted. That's been done. And over, going back all the way to 2002, since I guess there's first any involved with this, we only had one home ever have a positive, uh, exceed the lead of 15 parts per billion. That was a home that had been sitting vacant. So it was likely just lead that leaks out of fixtures and stuff like that. But the other ones have all come back well below the actually even if they could become stricter 10 parts per billion has always stayed under that the one thing that will change though with this new inventory is we'll be now be targeting uh, the summer 2026 unknown most likely because we'll have to assume they are led and we'll be increasing the sampling total that is like 60 sites and we'll have to be doing targeting some of the schools i believe and daycares and things beyond like that so we'll probably start working next summer 
we don't anticipate any problems with what I've seen over the past 20 years, and you don't know for sure. But we, like Seth said, we haven't seen a lot of alarm bells. So we don't anticipate it to be well, the, an issue. It, they're also lowering the action level for so communities, right? That, yeah. And we've traditionally been below, well, even below yeah, that, yeah. even yeah. heightened yeah. restrictions. So we're, we're, really, we're really lucky in Auburn um, with our raw water with respect to lead. Um, a lot of it has to do with pH. Like that, I think that was like the major crux of, of Flint, Michigan, was changing water source and not put, having corrosion protection and significant amount of lead leached out of their system as a result of, um, you know, a diff high or low pH water. We have very neutral water that doesn't, is not corrosive. Um, there's a lot of communities that have to do corrosion protection at their treatment plant to lower or raise the pH so that it doesn't do these things within the, the system and increase the lead level. So this. This is our, our worst of the two letters, I think probably the, the most nerve wracking for a customer to get. This is telling them um, right off the bat that the bold letters, I got to require a replacement. Uh, we followed guidelines from the health department. This is like kind of boilerplate of what they want to see. And we've also sent this to the local health department for one final review before we send it out. Um, but it's telling, we have to notify them about their water service line. Um, it's a galvanized service line requiring replacement. I'm happy to forward this along to you guys to review before we mail these out too. If you have any ideas or see things in here you don't like or um, suggestions, I'm ha you know, the more people that can look at it, the better. Um, you know, so it's, it's talking about how these gal galvanized service lines may have absorbed lead if there was potentially a lead line upstream of them. In Auburn, it's very unlikely that that's the case, but this is just the way that the inventory spit out the information after we provided uh, the necessary detail along each line. Um, so it's telling them that our records indicate that it may have been upstream at one point. We can't say that it, that it definitely there wasn't, wasn't a lead line there. Um, they can take a photo inside their house, provide us with information through this customer portal, or they can contact us and schedule an appointment. Both letters will have the information related to health effects of lead, which I'm sure many of you know. And then there's also some recommendations for uh, specific to drinking water, to only use cold water. Um, Obviously, they can't control the temperature of the water coming into the home, but inside your home, your, your fixtures can potentially dissolve lead faster um, than cold water. Flush your pipes. This is really the big thing, is your pipes that sit stagnant slowly build up lead concentration. So if I had a full lead service line sitting there all night and I woke up and started to run water, you want to get that initial flush, that column of water that's been sitting in your lead service line. Um, not in Auburn, because we don't have many, but that column of water pushed through your entire house and out your spigot. Clean your faucet, because th those aerators on your faucet can build up lead as well, all those contact points, or they could use a filter. And then there's information in here on how um, we might replace these galvanized services through our capital improvement program, uh, throwing the engineering department under the bus a little bit with some information if they wanted to reach out to say, hey, you know, is there, is there a project in my area coming up? Um, talk about the responsibility of homeowners to replace their, their service lines from the main. Um, provide a, this, this link here to the, um, the program that the city offers. And then some quick second page FAQs. So the stolen picture to help people understand what a service line is what they look like. I'm a, I'm a big picture guy. Um, 
Is it safe to drink my tap water? Yes. They might not believe it, but it is. Um, how do I access the inventory? And I think that's, that's live right now. So I can show you what that looks like. Oh, gosh. Oh, you updated it, so I need to redo that link. Well, this is good practice, I mean. It did work for you? Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, it's a, it's a massive undertaking of an inventory, in my opinion. It, it, it's a, gotcha. So this is what changed? So, I mean, this is a little overwhelming and difficult to, to see, but you can search your own house. Um, it's not the best. That's why we're working on the GIS map. I think that'll be so much cleaner and easier for people to engage in their, um, their own service, empower them to be able to look that up and, and see it themselves. <coughs> Then once you download it, you can search. But yeah, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. It's a, every single service in, in Auburn that we have records on or don't. Will I receive this notification again? Yes, every year until we're able to verify their service. So there's a chance over the course of this next year, the person who received something in the mail this year will have identified that service to the point that we can actually remove that. They won't get the letter the next year. Um, we're encouraging the public to reach out to us before they spend money on their service and so that we can prioritize and try to identify and maybe eliminate the need for them to have to, to do it. Even though it's not a bad idea. I mean, some of these services were installed in the 1900s. They've been serving our community for over 125 years at this point it's probably time for a new new line from the main and in, into your house i've heard people do it and just love it because all of a sudden their pressure and their flow is through the roof um, so So it's not, it's not as bad news as it is in many other communities across upstate New York. I'm sure you've seen some headlines. City of Syracuse recently had an article. Um, Rochester's had a ton of lead service lines. Some communities have gone to their records and said, oh, we have all lead lines here. And then they'll design a whole capital improvement program. They'll go out to bid. They'll go to replace them and find that they're copper because their, rec <laughs> their records weren't updated. Um, and we find that too. I mean, there, there's every every day Tom Gaybacks out there. We have we're using our, our records are the best that we have. They're normally right on, but sometimes a staff member in the '60s didn't update the card when they put in a service. So. Any questions for Mr. Jensen? So if you guys get questions because I'm sure you will. Sure. I Thank hope you. this helps. Oh. Um, Councilor Kent. So um, John made reference to schools and daycare centers. What about other buildings that are not residents? They're, they're in the inventory. They're in the, the Aldi's are in the inventory. Yeah. They'll be in there. Whether we test them or not, we'll, I'll have to go back and look. I'll have a specific set of rules I'll have to follow next. Okay. And I'll follow a little bit. In the past, they want a lot of, a lot of single residents houses or apartment buildings and stuff like that so I'll have to like I'll have to dig deeper and see if that's still the case the adult, you know doing this the single homes and then the schools and daycare if they'll be more flexible with businesses and things like that but up until up until, you know, until like the last year it was single residences and we couldn't find enough of them then you could move on to like say duplex on the front and stuff gotcha. like that. So. thank you Aren't our are schools and um, daycare providers are, are they they're required to do their own testing too, they, right? They Above and we're gonna have to do it. okay.
but in the past they've done a, a lot of testing but then for the health department yeah Thank you for sharing the letter. Um, it looks fine to me. I would just say that the most important thing you want the reader to know, should, I mean, if, if it's mostly informational, this letter, or if you want them to an action, there's a lot of information in that letter. Oh, there is. So, I mean, if you want them to have an action, that might be a bullet or a bold face. Bold them out. But other than that, it looks good. It's so good those were required to put the letter through. There you go. Yeah, the lion, the lion's so share of it. Know that they have to be in your letter. Oh yeah. That's oh yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I'm sure there'll be items on the website that you know point people the way to go to you know through this process, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jensen. You mentioned a couple things you're doing to protect homeowners from price gouging and things like that. So thank you. Um, for doing that that's that's important that people aren't taken advantage of when they do have to do this work yeah thank you for being proactive with that and mr west while you're here i just want to acknowledge and thank you and your team at water filtration for getting us through uh, harmful algal bloom season safely again this year um, you know it's the number one thing i hear from folks out in the public is what's going on with the water um, you know we all turn the tap on and just expect it to be safe um, and it's safe because of work that you all are doing so thank you Very good, thank you.